Hello, welcome. Here I'm going to be talking about UPN changes. Now, these can happen in many forms, but in a migration sense, what we've done with this person is we've uh, brought them across with a particular UPN. We've set them up. The machine is all good to go. And if we have a quick look around this machine, you'll see that uh, we're logged on as this guy, Bob Green at formula1.cc. That is the domain we've brought into the tenant. And we've been using that to set up all the users and everything's going really well with them. They're logging in, they're, they're using it totally fine. But now we've finished the migration. We're actually going to bring across the actual name and get them set up. In this particular demo, we're going to use the cozymouse.com. But what I'm interested here is what happens to this user? We've got an Azure AD joined machine and it's been joined as, as you can see, Bob Green at formula1.cc. And all of the applications and everything that he has is logged in with that. He's got his OneDrive, he's got his Teams. Everything's good to go with formula1.cc. So what's really going to happen to Bob when we say, okay, you can't use that domain anymore. We've brought you across to this new tenant. We want you to use cozymouse.com. Do we need to rebuild his machine? Or do we just change the UPN and let the machine cope with it? Well, no, we're not going to set up a brand new uh, uh, rebuild for his machine on this one. What we're going to do is we're going to change it in the console in Cozy Mouse, make him a, a CozyMouse.com person. Then we're going to reboot his machine. And I'm going to take you through everything that happens on that machine to get that UPN change to take effect. There's a few things that Bob's got to do, and there's a few things that will happen automatically. There's a few reboots involved, but this really is just the video to show you that you can change a UPN inside a tenant for, as I say, an Azure AD join machine, and it will take effect. A few little things you got to do, so bear with me on this, but I'm just going to take you through the entire process end to end and show you what happens. So really quick walkthrough. Yes, you can see here he is on the settings. Let's have a look at his teams and you can see the new teams there, formula1.cc. So he's loaded up there. Let's have a look at his, uh, his OneDrive. And in his settings here, uh, you can see here, Formula One CC, Bob Green, that's all good there. And let's have a look at some of his applications. So let's have a look at Excel and just see what uh, account that is um, set up with. We go to account here, you can see there we are. There's his UPN as well in there. And just lastly, I'm just going to run up Outlook. You can see it's not in here, so we'll just draw quick search there, Outlook. Now this is the, the traditional Outlook, it's not the, the new one. So yep, thank you, excellent, good. And you can see here, Bob Green, formula1.cc. As it happens, this is a test user, he doesn't have any mail, but you can see he is looking at that account. I might send some test emails in there just to populate that to see what it looks like. But you can really see he's working completely fine as Bob Green at that UPN. So let's go ahead now and jump into the console and let's change it. Radio Cozy Mouse console is our user, Bob Green. So quite easily, what we'll do is we'll change his username. Now, when we do that, it will create an alias automatically for the formula1.cc. Uh, so he'll be able to get his uh, emails and the like that he may have had going to that address. So if we just go in and say his mouse and done. Awesome. You can see it's, it's added an alias automatically. So I just want to point out, you don't need to go ahead and do that. It'll do it itself. But that is a very, as you can see, quick and easy change to make. Once it saves, there you go, close that. And you can see he's now Bob Green at Cozy Mouse. So from an administration perspective, it's like our job is done. Woohoo. Um, from Bob Green's perspective, yeah, not really so done. Let's go and check him out and see what happens on his machine now. So we're going to give Bob a call and say, hey, we just changed the UPN, buddy. You need to go and reboot your machine. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go in here and we are going to restart. There we go. So obviously the reboot is going to be an important thing to do for him. Uh, it'll force it to then pick up those, those initial changes and we'll see what, uh, see what occurs. Rightio, anyway, so that is now rebooted as you can see. And it looks like we have, uh, yep, Bob Green come up and we'll just log in as normal with his pin. And we do nothing else, but as you can see, I've just done the restart, done nothing else at all for Bob's machine. And we've done it quite quickly because we only made that UPN change. Uh, literally, I've just been recording as we're going through. So it's it's very, very quick. 
um, that we've uh, that we've made this change. So let's see what effect it's had on his machine. So firstly, what we'll do is we'll go into settings and have a look. And look at that, as if by magic, <laughs> you can see that it's changed it. Bob Green at CozyMouse.com. Okay, so that's a really good sign straight up that the, the actual user that we're logging in is all we did was we restarted the machine, put in his pin number, and he logged in. And you can see his UPN has changed here. But now let's go and have a look at all these other services and see what else has happened automatically and see what else we might need to do uh, manually to, to make sure he is totally operational. So we'll close that. And you can see Teams has obviously come up because Teams um, starts automatically. And we'll have a look at here. And I'm expecting that it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be Formula One CC. So what I'm expecting to do with this one is that he's going to have to log out of Teams and then log back into Teams uh, before he can really start working correctly. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll just hit sign out here and hit sign out. There we go. And it should drop us out and present us with a login screen. Again, it's normally what it does. And there we go. Look, it, it said, okay, you're now logged into the machine as Bob Green. It knows that the effectively the underlying GUID and the like for his account it has stayed the same. It's just the UPN that's sitting on top. So we'll go in and click on Bob Green at Cozy Mouse. It should just let us in without a password because it's obviously authenticated already. Um, but looking at that, we just wait for that to, to connect correctly because it's still got a, a little X up there. But let's have a look at our settings here. And you can see, ah, oh, there we go. Uh, Bob Green, CozyMouse.com, votable. So really, that was a very simple um, sign out of Teams and then sign back in again, and it's good. Now you can see, obviously, we've um, uh, it, it's it's the same account effectively. So all of his chat and everything doesn't need to be migrated anywhere. You can see, obviously, look, he's having some problem with his TPS reports. For anybody that's as old as I am, you'll know what that means. Um, but you can see that that essentially uh, his team membership. And you can see all of this here uh, is is there. Look, it's the same. It's the same account. So nothing should have changed there. What we're interested in here is this part here, which is which is good to see. So it looks like Teams is OK. Let's go and have a look now at the Excel and Word and what have you about what account it's uh, registered to. So we look at the blank workbook. That's all good. We can see we've got Bob Green up the top here. And that is signed in as Cozy Mouse. That's a good sign. Uh, but let's go and have a look at the account here. And you can see here the user information is correct. But you can see here it's still the subscription product for the Formula One CC, which is not correct. Um, that wouldn't have a real drastic effect because he is still licensed. And, and automatically when it does go and want to pick up um, the or relicense it effectively for the subscription product, it will change on its own. This is the key one I'm interested in, which has obviously come across good, but we can change this. How we do that is we actually just go and say switch license, and you'll find that it wants to log in as Cozy Mouse there. Great, excellent. And you'll find that, there we go, hit next, no problem. And you see it changes there. So it is a very quick and easy thing to do to. Uh, to switch it across and, and update the subscription product on the machine to the correct UPN, although it's not an essential task if they do miss it. It's not going to have a detrimental effect. It may come up with a warning in a month's time saying, hey, it needs to do this. They may have to just go and hit the switch license themselves. But but ordinarily is what I've seen is that it, it will actually just, just do it on its own in, in the course of time. As I, as I keep saying, this is our key one right here. Now, looking at this, though, check these out. The OneDrive links are not. The OneDrive has happened. Now, this is what I was expecting. So this is all correct, but let's now go and have a look at the OneDrive setup. And if we go in here and have a look at OneDrive and have a look at our settings, you'll see that this is now set up as Formula1.cc. OK, so it looks like that has not come across. So what do we do about that? What are we going to do to fix this uh, particular item? So really the only way I found to, to make this work for OneDrive is to actually go in and say unlink this PC and then force it to then re-log on as the, the CozyMouse.com account. Um, so here we hit unlink, and unlink the account. 
what that'll do is it will log him out and that's all good and, and jump us back to this setup OneDrive again. Now, obviously, he hasn't, he's not going to lose anything on OneDrive because the actual OneDrive that it's going to point to is exactly the same place that it was for the Formula1.cc. It's exactly the same space in the, the big SharePoint ecosystem. It's now going to be uh, connected with a Cozy Mouse account uh, instead. So if we hit sign in with Cozy Mouse, now this you might think this is all wonderful on plain sailing, but I'm going to show you something that goes slightly wrong on this. Um, but you can see here, it's the same place. Uh, I don't think I showed you that before, but that, that is the same location that it had before. So we hit next on that and we'll say, yes, it already exists. Great. Yes, definitely use this folder. Um, and away it goes. And you think, okay, that's all good. It's all working fine. But let me show you what happens in here. Ah, well, what do you know? It has actually worked. Okay, so look, when I did one of these uh, probably about a month ago, uh, it actually came up with red X's across this whole thing and actually required a reboot to make that work. But it looks like some of these updates on, on Windows 11 and the like has actually made that uh, come across quite seamlessly. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised. Really, the logout and login of OneDrive has worked. Look at this here. Let's have a look at here and settings. And yeah, Bob Green, CozyMouse.com. Bam, she's all good. And yeah, if we look at documents, we'll see that's the test document I had before. Um, so that does look like it has done things correctly. Okay, so OneDrive's good. Everything's uh, fine with that, which is... Yeah, you can tell I'm, I'm surprised that I didn't need a reboot on that one, but that's uh, obviously evolution of the way things are working. So, yeah, very happy with that. Cool. Now, if we did have any SharePoint or things synced down to the machine, that would have updated as part of OneDrive because it's obviously the same thing. So uh, you might have noticed I missed out that item. If you've got other folders down here um, that were syncing as part of the old uh, login account, they would uh, continue to sync. You may have to go in and resync them because it's uh, linking up to a new uh, UPN, but essentially it would then point to the same place. So they just grab the same files again. And they're obviously in the cloud anyway, so there's no, no issue with any losing of anything on the local storage. But that's, that's where they would appear, and that would obviously come across with the OneDrive account. But what I do want to have a look at is Outlook. And you might say, well, you should have done it first because it's the most important. Everybody uses email. That's the lifeblood of everything. Well, some teams disagree with you on that. But essentially, yes, Outlook is one of the key factors here. And you can see there's our test email that uh, we, we've sent in there. I promised you I'd send that one in. But have a look at this. Look, he's still here. Formula1.cc. Now, if we do send an email, it will go out as CozyMouse.com because that's what the primary SMTP is in the back end of Exchange Online. And he will be able to, to receive at Formula1.cc and also at the CozyMouse.com. So you might think, well, there's not really a problem here. People can find him uh, regardless. And it's just, it's just basically a, a name here. Now, I can tell you straight up that this will not change. This is part of the local profile. And that will not update no matter how long you leave it. So really the only way around that, as, as I say, it, it's a working machine in terms of the, the outlook and how everything works in there. This really is just for the aesthetics of uh, the, the, the account for Bob. He may want to have the CozyMouse.com in there. So really the only way to do this in terms of this outlook is to remove the or, or just basically get a new profile. You can remove the old profile if you want and put a new profile on him, but he does need to access a brand new profile for Outlook to make that work. Now, people have varying ways that they go ahead and make new profiles. I personally like to do the old school way, which is control panel, and I go in here and I go small icons and I go to mail, where are you, there you are. And it brings up the old school Outlook layout. You've got show profiles and you can see there's the original one. So we're going to add one. We'll just call this one, uh, we'll call it Cozy Mouse. That's where he is. And it should pick it up. Um, sometimes you'll find that because uh, it's, I don't know whether it's a little confused or not, but effectively what we can do here is put Bob Green at .com and I will put his password in. So this is obviously a uh, real life situation. 
there we go and it will search and want us to log in with all the, uh, the correct settings for 365 there we go and hit finish and there we go yeah thanks very much for that good and we'll say here we'll go to always use the cozy mouse profile apply that and back in and run up outlook so now when we start outlook i really should pin it to the start shouldn't i but here we go outlook what i'm hoping is it's going to come in and find uh settings for the first time now it, because it's keeping everything in the the cloud settings in terms of like signature and rules and everything now uh, you'll find that it does actually keep all of those settings in there but you can see here now it's got cozymouse.com which is ideal so that concludes that session today i hope you found that useful uh, you'll find that the nicest thing with this is that we haven't created a new desktop profile for the user we've just changed the upn so it actually is is the same so if it's got any programs installed and, and other registry settings and the like they're obviously going to be there exactly the same so it's a, a, obviously a good thing to note but all the key Microsoft services are now using the new UPN, as you can see, as we went through that quick demonstration. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. You know, I appreciate it when you do and have a good day.